I'm Donna DeBellia. I'm a professor of epidemiology and pediatrics at the University of Colorado Anschutz Medical Campus, and I'm the director of a center called LEAD, which stands for uh, Life Force Epidemiology of Adiposity and Diabetes. Our paper in uh, the special issue from Diabetologia is um, focusing on developmental overnutrition and risk of obesity and diabetes in the offspring. And this is a broad topic, um, but it also highlights the fact that uh, diabetes doesn't just happen. It has a long history that starts in utero or even before that with what your parents did or were exposed to um, before uh, you were born continues through the uh, intrauterine period and early life because all this period um, is a vulnerable, sensitive period to a variety of exposures or risk factors or behaviors that set in motion a trajectory of, of growth, uh, of development of organs and systems and, and relationships between them that might predispose uh, people later in life um, to obesity, diabetes, and, and other cardiometabolic outcomes. What are some of the exposures that, that we are interested in when we talk about developmental overnutrition? Um, some, of, some of the things we focused in the article are, are related to maternal diabetes during pregnancy, either pre-existing diabetes or gestational diabetes, maternal obesity or gestational weight gain, uh, maternal diet and physical activity during pregnancy. But virtually all sorts, all types of exposures happening during these so-called sensitive periods, such as pregnancy or early life, uh, might have long-term effects on the health of the offspring through epigenetic mechanisms. And so um, uh, we're studying uh, a variety of things. Um, my work has primarily focused on, on better understanding the role of maternal diabetes during pregnancy and how that exposure for the fetus uh, changes the life course trajectory of the offspring in terms of their own risk for diabetes and, and obesity. Uh, for example, um, my first paper uh, way back in the uh, mid-late 1990s, um, which was published in Diabetologia, was uh, probably the first paper that described um, the occurrence of type 2 diabetes in children. Up to that point, we used to call type 2 diabetes adult onset diabetes. And all of a the sudden, uh, there were these reports, including that first paper published in Diabetologia, uh, showing that type 2 diabetes not only exists in children, but it's increasing. Um, that was in a special population, uh, a population with a very high risk for type 2 diabetes, the Pima Indians. Uh, but it showed uh, a dramatic increase in type 2 diabetes in children at a very early age. And it, it, it also showed that uh, about half of that diabetes in children in that population was due to exposure to maternal diabetes during pregnancy. Half of it was due to that exposure, which means that if we could prevent that exposure, we could reduce the risk of type 2 diabetes at an early age in half. So that set my, my career trajectory in motion and my interest in this topic, um, which is still relevant today, 20 years after. Um, now we're talking and looking and discussing uh, about multiple exposures, not just maternal diabetes, maternal obesity, maternal smoking, um, maternal diet and physical activity, environmental exposures, um, chemicals. Uh, we're studying the mechanisms that might be responsible for these long-term effects. Uh, there's a new field of epigenetics, which did not quite exist at the time we were describing these uh, conditions. Um, and so um, all, all of these topics 
uh, are very nicely described in this special issue in Diabetologia. The question of why is type 2 diabetes increasing in children and why is it increasing uh, predominantly in certain uh, groups or racial ethnic groups is a good question. Um, we have now data from uh, another landmark study that I'm, that I'm part of, the Search for Diabetes in Youth study out of the United States in which we're showing an increasing uh, incidence, an increasing risk of type 2 diabetes in children in the United States in all racial ethnic groups except white children. So it's a good question, both why is it increasing and why not in white children, or at least over the time period that we studied. Well, the answer is com complex, of course. Um, some um, racial ethnic groups, such as the Native Americans, such as Hispanics or African Americans, have a different genetic predisposition for, for diabetes, type 2 diabetes. Um, so that, that might have a role, although it does not explain the differences in trends. Um, we think that a bigger role ha is, is, is played by um, the kinds of exposures, uh, both environmental as well as social, that these children grow up into um, because there are huge differences between um, you know, wealthy, primarily Caucasian families um, in the United States and uh, families who, um, who are from uh, disadvantaged backgrounds in terms of how, how, they, how they eat, how much they eat, how much they exercise, um, in terms of um, uh, environmental exposures that they might be um, exposed to pollutants, chemicals, um, in terms of access to care. Uh, so that's part of it here. Um, also, we are seeing that this exposure to maternal obesity and diabetes during pregnancy is more common in, in uh, certain racial ethnic groups and perhaps less so in white uh, populations. So everything is, is intricated here um, and, and has a role. But um, if I think if we continue on this path and uh, don't do something to prevent this vicious cycle, we're going to see it in, in white kids as well. Um, there's just a matter of time.